But we're going to uh, get some additional practice with taking log transforms and uh, we'll, the outgrowth of this kind of manipulation is going to give us the picket plot. Uh, and the picket plot is a, is a useful plot uh, for log analysts um, to help uh, differentiate between water bearing and hydrocarbon bearing zones. Um, the uh, picket plot is, you know, like many of the things that we've been working with, it's derived from uh, Archie's relationship. And we've been particularly focused on the water saturations either in the um, uh, uh, formation uninfluenced by the uh, drilling operation or the saturation, water saturation, fluid saturation in the invaded zone, the end zone, the zone impacted by by drilling. And here is just a list of the terms that, that you should already be familiar with. I'm just kind of relisting them here for reference. Um, and uh, these constants in particular just keep keep showing up. We have the cementation factor, the saturation exponent. These are often just defaulted to two. Uh, and A is often um, ignored, set equal to one. Uh, but A is associated with the nature of the pathways through the uh, pore space, and I believe it can have values that kind of range between 0.5 and 1.5. So whether or not you have a direct shot from your location to the well bore, or whether you have to take a roundabout path to get over to the well bore, um, that's, that's where this value comes in. So what I'd like for you to do is, is a simple exercise. Uh, again, you know, we're working on equation manipulation skills. So solve this equation for R sub B. R sub B should now be your dependent variable. It's going to be a function of the porosity and the water saturation. So doing that, you should get uh, this relationship here between the true resistivity, <clears throat> the bulk resistivity, and um, uh, the fluid resistivity, porosity, and water saturation. And the picket plot that we're talking about um, in this video is obtained from log transforms of this equation into linear form. And we get actually two forms. One where R sub B, log R sub B is the independent, or is the dependent variable, and one where the log of the porosity is the dependent variable. So convert this equation into logarithmic form. Another exercise. Pause and take a shot at it. Okay, you should, <clears throat> you know, you're taking the log of the dependent variable, uh, the bulk resistivity, you get the log of this ratio of terms. And then we just use our rules for working with logarithms, and um, uh, we have our the log of the uh, bulk resistivity is our dependent variable. It's going to be equal to the log of the product of A, uh, the, the uh, uh, just the constant uh, times the fluid resistivity minus the log of the product of the porosity to the nth power and the water saturation to the nth power. So, and then just kind of breaking this apart into a sum of logs, the minus sign rolls through, and we have that uh, log R sub B in linear form is linearly related to uh, porosity and uh, also to water saturation. So now uh, we did that. We've got um, log R sub B as our uh, dependent variable. Now take this relationship, uh, well, the relationship that uh, we <coughs> we have down here, and rearrange that so that you now have the log of the porosity as your dependent variable. So start with this equation, and where we got log R sub B as our dependent variable, now develop an equation where the log of the porosity is the dependent variable. Okay, well, 
just starting with this relationship here, we can um, we, we 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 don't necessarily have to go back to the um, to the ratio here in order to do this, but we could have. Uh, but we can also just kind of work from this relationship here and solve directly for um, <clears throat> the log of phi. So a little shortcut. So we, we have this relationship here. We're going to uh, add m log of phi to both sides of the equation, and we're going to subtract log of r, the bulk resistivity, from both sides of the equation to get the relationship in this form. We've got the uh, dependent variable over here where we want it. We have this uh, um, cementation factor in here, which we'll just divide that, we'll divide through which is going to give us the log of phi, our dependent variable, in terms of the <clears throat> um, brine resistivity, the bulk resistivity, and the, uh, the logs of the bulk resistivity and, and water saturation. So we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but this obviously is going to, this additional term in here is going to lead to a set of equations that cross, we're really interested in, you know, your log data, you're going to have information about the uh, bulk resistivity and the porosity from sonic or um, density logs, and you'll be plotting values up on this picket plot, uh, RB, uh, log RB, log phi, and uh, you'll plot them relative to certain saturation values. So, uh, <clears throat> so if the water saturation was 100%, then SW would be equal to 1, and the log of SW would be equal to 0, so that this term would drop out. So in the case that we have the least interest in, where we have 100% water saturation, there is no term over here, so we just have a relationship between the porosity and the, uh, uh, which would be a, an intercept here, and uh, the <clears throat> our independent variable, the bulk resistivity, uh, would be linear, and it would have a slope minus one over m that crosses from a pro that crosses over from a porosity of 100% uh, or for 100% water saturation, uh, crosses left to right with a negative slope equal to minus 1 over m. Uh, this 100% water saturation line corresponds to the wet line, and we'll show what that is in a minute. So we'll kind of go back to this form up here. We'll rearrange the terms a little bit so that we have the log of porosity. So we've got the, the log of the fluid resistivity, and we also have the log of the water saturation. Now, so we have different saturations, uh, different water saturations. We're going to change this intercept around. So when we change the water saturation, we're going to come up with a different intercept. We're still going to have this linear relationship between the log of the porosity and the log of the bulk resistivity. It's going to have this slope of a negative slope of minus 1 over m, but we're going to have for the different lines relative to water saturation, points are going to uh, plot up on lines that have different intercepts. <clears throat> so this is uh, what the picket plot looks like, and I've taken this from uh, Crane's handbook. This uh, Crane has uh, just an, an ex a wealth of resources for the, the log analyst on the, on the internet, and you can visit this site here for uh, this particular plot. But you can see where these, you know, these different values for the water saturation here, um, we, 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 when, it, when, S, when the water saturation is less than 1, then, then the log of SW is going to be negative, so that we get a positive here, so that, a positive sign here, so that this is going to increase the uh, intercept, and we basically see that in this plot. As the water saturation decreases, we have 100% water saturation on the blue line here, up to 15% water saturation on this line. Uh, the intercepts, somewhere over here, 
uh, keep getting larger and larger in the positive direction. Of course, anything above 100% porosity is, so we cut everything off here, but um, the intercepts somewhere over there. Um, so these, when you, when you look at your log data and you plot up measurements obtained from logs, you can distinguish values that are in wet areas of the formation where you don't have hydrocarbon or not very much hydrocarbon and distinguish that from areas where you have um, high gas oil saturation. So when the points tend to move away from the water line over towards the gas oil uh, low water saturation relationship in the plot. So you tend to see when you're looking at your log data, points in the water zone will plot up down here, the wet zone, and points in hydrocarbon bearing zones are going to move away from this line here into different regions based on water saturation. So we haven't talked about this, but you know, porosity measurements, we can obtain the porosity measurements uh, in two ways. Uh, if we have a sonic log, we can get uh, uh, porosity measurements from the sonic log measurements, uh, delta T's, and uh, our matrix, uh, ma matrix terms here. So the log analyst basically has to um, factor in the respective uh, densities or, or interval transit times. Uh, for the rock matrix and the um, drilling fluid uh, or the formation fluid. So just a reminder of what the terms are here. We have these two different ways, one from a sonic log, one from a density log, uh, two different ways to get porosity that we can use in the picket plot. And you could also have a neutron porosity measurement. So. So again, just um, some helpful references here, which I've certainly borrowed from as I've gone through some of this uh, um, analysis and uh, equation manipulation here. Archie's seminal paper, the, uh, the AAPG well log analysis uh, uh, text by Asquith and Krigowski Crane's handbook, of course, just about any question you might have, uh, an excellent resource. And then LeBeau's uh, SEG uh, Geophysical Reference Series, Volume 2. And uh, a very good over overview of wireline uh, well logging principles. So, hope this has been useful for you, and um, we'll talk to you later.